watching the budget because it's interesting to see different perspectives from your own. Oh, what it is. Mine is largely really? colored by what Mariano says, which is that monster of it. But a couple of people were saying this is not a poor people's budget, and I, I, I actually went and asked the person. I said, well, why would you say that? Because of, you know, the, the number of measures that actually to me would benefit people who are more disadvantaged. Um, they said, well, because they raised the price of gas. Which has gone up by 15%. Um, and there's apparently somebody was asking why they go immediately, how is that allowed, but the debate isn't completely new, said as a four month. Yeah, there, there is a provisional law where you can make provisional changes that subject to. It's called provisional collections of taxes ordinance, yes. which essentially you pass immediately. Um, it gives the minister power to make changes in the tax ordinance without it being approved by parliament. And he then has a 90 day window between which to build a finance bill, which gives him the legislative authority to enact them. So it, it's a, and that's why it's called provisional collection of taxes order. So it's, it, it's issued virtually immediately. The budget starts, and the, 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 the tax order is already drafted. The treasury solicitor drafts it, and it's issued at that stage and then becomes law. So prices go up literally immediately. So in this case, we saw with the reduction of the fuel subsidy by 15% for diesel and for super uh, and gasoline. Uh, I had, there's some people on, on, on Facebook and Twitter saying, well, um, former minister of Fuad Khan said, did, did, did we vote for increased um, fuel prices? Now, as I recall, Mr. Hawaii was also indicating that the subsidy had to be addressed at some point, and they in fact addressed it to some extent with the premium going from four to five something five, in 2012. Mm -hmm. So this would have been inevitable no matter who was in power. Yes. In fact, 50% seems quite low to me. Uh, yes, and, and that, that is a what you call it. That's, um, you know, there's a view that if you have to take medicine, you should take it quickly and early if you have to arrest a problem. Uh, and in this particular case, especially if you have your eye on what's going to take place in five years, and invariably the electorate's memory of a, of bad, of a bad dose of medicine has time to work its way through the system. If you do it, and it becomes a new normal at that point. It becomes a new normal. So it's like a bandage, you go, okay, I'll pull it off in four, and one, two, two three, ouch. Four. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, that, and that's, that's one of the reasons for putting in all of those measures at the same time. And as you, as you said it, what the PNM did is give and take. Right? So you kind of get a middle of the road. Some, some things for some, I right. talk to the talk to the people over sixty and growing element of the population. People earning many of us and, and, yeah. and so on and so forth. So there's that element in it. But you, the, you even the United Arab Emirates, for example, um, which depends, which uh, in large measure in terms of, of oil and gas revenues, they remove subsidies. They carry the, the price of the pump to, to world market prices because they could not, they could no longer afford to do it. Saudi Arabia has been borrowing. All right, so when you take those type of things in consideration, if you are a commodity exporter, as we are in terms of oil and gas, then by definition, the changes in prices affect us. And that's what the minister says. So in those circumstances, you have little choice but to make those type of adjustments. In fact, I thought 15% was very young. Um, well, I think the very gradual. That they want to just test the waters and have further consultations with them. Yes, and, and, and also to let's just see how the population reacts and let's just see how it works its way through the system. Because there, there's because some, there's some algebra in this. That suggests that the fuel subsidy is actually punishing poorer people. Yes, there, there's, that, there's that aspect. There's, of course, the other school of thought which says it actually you know, affects poorer people to, to remove but, the subsidy. So I'm not sure where either of you fall on that spectrum. But it will, it and is. it must. In terms of transport costs. Transport costs. Correct, correct. What, what is the multiplier effect in terms of 15% increase in the cost of diesel? In terms of I buy an item on a store shelf, what percentage of that is, if either of you know, is, is actually... In the Trinidad and Tobago market, there's, there's no, what you call it, there's no um, if you're on cross coefficient of demand mm -hmm. in that regard to, to say this, this is what's going to take place with regard to prices. And I'll give you a for instance. Uh, in 2008, when we started adjusting the fuel subsidy, by moving the price of premium up, as distinct from super, um, and we didn't touch diesel, the first people to put up their hand and say that they were actually got cost for going up, and they needed an increase for the maxi taxi drivers, who whose fuel is diesel. Well, there's no relationship between 
they have fewer costs. Well, I was thinking, thinking so you tra were travel this afternoon, and, and she was saying, oh gosh, I'm worried about the price of, of Mac. I said, well, it only went at 50 cents. She said, no, 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 you don't understand how it works. They will raise it a dollar. They're not yes. going to raise it 50 cents or 25 cents. Yes. It always jumps by a dollar. No, no. But it's easier to collect a dollar than it is to collect. The, 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 the new unit of measurement is a dollar, not 25 cents or 50 cents. It's easier to collect a dollar. Yeah. So this could have actually an effect on the average traveler and things like that, if history is any... No, will. It will have. So it will have. Will have. Will be. Because I think we could reasonably expect, even if you were to get the, the maxi taxi driver, and diesel is used by maxi taxi drivers, and diesel is also the fuel which is used by the commercial segment. Most of our commercial goods vehicles are, are what you call it, are diesel. So the argument saying that that uh, what you call it, that um, it is those people with high-end cars and so on. That's a small percentage of the market. The majority of, of, of our rolling stock that uses diesel are commercial vehicles and maxi taxis. But I mean, is there also a, 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 a notion that certainly in other countries see it happening, when the price becomes more reflective of what the actual price should be, then people look at alternative fuels, for example, CNG, which the PNM has been pushing for quite some time now, but which there's a reluctant adoption for because there's a cost associated with it. And it's still cheaper to buy diesel to a lot of people. Yeah, and you will, you will get. Because it's subsidized. You're not going to get any alter, any any use of the alternative CNG because the economic price at which CNG can sell is five dollars. Five dollars effectively. Five dollars effectively. It's something like the regional about five dollars a liter. Working out. I mean, it's a rough. For the price of premium. Though. A rough, a rough, a, a rough calculation. But on the other side of the fence, um, diesel is that this will go up to what one seventy. So 170 a liter essentially. 172, I think, yeah. 172. Um, that carries you to what? 660, 664, somewhere there about. It's still off the price at, at which, what you call it, at which um, it, then, it then falls into position at which CNG becomes, if you want, an economic alternative. It hasn't yet reached to that point. So we, we can't promote an alternative fuel if we subsidize in something that is cheaper. Nobody's going to buy the more expensive one. Why? And how do you explain that to the public? That was a big question. No, you, you can't. So that so you take the plunge as a government. So you have you have to adjust your your policy measures. You have to send policy signals that I'm equalizing the prices and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to put these. Um, and that's one of the reasons why nobody's building new new CNG stations. Right? Why build a CNG station if nobody's going to buy it? Mm -hmm. So I have to I have to get it to a price where it becomes comparable or alternative. It makes sense to buy the, the cleaner burning fuel or the more efficient fuel. And we're getting there, but too slowly, perhaps. And in terms of the actual quantum of the fuel subsidy, it's, it's, it's north of four billion, isn't it? It has reduced substantially, because it, it was, when, when the price was at 115, mm. right, the fuel subsidy was about four, four point something, going on five billion. So now the spread is less. Now that, now that it has come down, yeah. um, it, it has dropped by something around half. So even at these prices, the fuel subsidy, I think, is still one point something billion. It's less than, just about less than two, but it's come down. But still is expensive if you're looking for revenue. Well, and in terms of, of governments looking at, you know, where scarce dollars are coming from to fund projects, it's 1.2 billion or whatever that could be used to build schools, to build police stations, to do other things. That is the most important point that you make. In terms of the development program, because you notice the minister did talk about uh, an, a road arterial system. He did talk about the road to Toko. He did talk about the, um, the road from San Fernando to Miaro. He did talk about the highway stroke causeway from Port of Spain to Chagaramas. Um, he did talk about the mass transit system. About now, removing all the traffic lights from here. And removing traffic. all the traffic lights and so on. Well, the cost of that overpass at the Nestle intersection was how much? 400 and something million dollars, just under five. Well, if you're going to do it at, at several inter interconnections, well, that's a, a pretty expensive proposition because you're talking about how, how many you're going to do, how many you're going to remove. If you want to remove all, then you have to have some sort of interconnection and roadway system that allows for it. Not cheap. So uh, this is an expensive proposition. And if you have no degrees of freedom in terms of your recurrent expenditure, where is your capital expenditure going? How is it going to be funded? So those are the sort of, I think at this stage of the game, the minister didn't address those issues. He didn't talk about the borrowing requirement. He said that conversations had been initiated with the, I, with the IDB um, or that the numbers were reviewed by the IMF. 
Well, okay, where we are now is, if these are the projections we're going to have, and this is the hold that we're going to take place, how are we going to reallocate the expenditures to allow for the development program to continue? Or alternatively, do we phase that development program over a longer period of time? And if so, what is the time frame? It's certainly not five years. And at a difficult time, do you really want to borrow any on the external market? Which is, of course, concerning. But right now, I think most of our borrowing is, is done internally, isn't it? It's domestic. In Which fact, is actually a better position to be in. Yeah, in fact, that was the best position. We could comfortably pay off all our debt now and still have some foreign exchange reserves left. And we'll be talking about foreign exchange very shortly. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more of our budget.